$5,000 just for... And you're figuring Monument City's gonna be like Tombstone? Uh, metro, uh, metro... A metropolis. Uh, yeah, but not like Tombstone. Blood-sucking boss Barney Bronson held the upper hand. Robbery, gunplay was the law. But Monument City ain't gonna let you get away with it. Miners digging out gold hand over fist. You ain't gonna blame them for wanting to celebrate spending it, are you, Sheriff? No, it's their money. Hard for it. But I aim to see that the crooks that take it away from them are on the level. Meaning? Meaning you're Barney Bronson. His gang of killers and bullies that are working for him. For instance? There's a new one. I can spot him a mile away. You won't catch him dirtying his hands trying to make an honest living with a pick and shovel. Hey, I'll call him a if you don't. You can almost see the Nazis on his gun from here. Mighty interesting picture of a tough hombre, Sheriff. Think I'll mosey over, see how right you are. And good luck to that reformer. You'll need it. It's on its way, I hope. And his name ain't Luck, brother. <laughs> I got a date with Barney Bronson. I'm Jack Trask, stranger. Does that sound like Barney Bronson? No, but uh, I'm mighty close to Barney, so to speak. I didn't come here to talk to no so to speak. Well, Barney ain't here. I thought maybe I could... You can rustle me a drink while I'm waiting. We'd stop and celebrate. Well, the town's yours, boys. Go ahead and have a good time. But if you get in the ruckus, please use your fist. Ah, we are. Thanks, Sheriff. Come on, gang, let's go. There we are. Must we put up with all this racket and trouble? I wish all our troubles were as harmless. Boys get sick of nothing but beef, and it's a long drive to the railroad. Oh, they're all right. I only wish the feller I sent for was riding with them. to work for your drinks now. Well, glory be! I'm sorry to spoil your fun, boys, but Lanky's Ma asked me to look after his health. I don't want to see him break his backbone reaching for that ceiling. <laughs> well, you're tall enough for a good substitute. Maybe you can do a little reaching. But a lot of good liquor, man. Hold that fire. I don't know a fellow with a mitt fast. Well, my father's name was Rand, my mother called me Tim. And them that's learned to stay behind his guns has lived to call him Trigger. Trigger Tim Rand. In the constant world you've been keeping yourself, Trigger. All right, Mr. Rand, the drinks are on me. Go ahead, boys. I'll be with you in a minute. All right, fellas, come on, let's all have a drink. Come on, boys. Put him down there. Here's a little party. That may cover an ugly map, kid, but a whole state couldn't cover a reputation like yours. Someday you won't be able to hear about my reputation. I thought not long ago I left you walled up behind our bars. The boys you left got a little careless. So that accounts for the extra notches on the gun, eh? 
I warned them never to turn their backs on you. But we'll make sure the same thing doesn't happen here. I'd advise you not to reload till you're well out of town. Listen, Trigger. I traveled all the way from the border to get here. How are the roads? Well, there ain't no detour around Monument City. But there's a through street. Get on it. Tim Ram, I didn't see you to wipe me out. Well, I'm sorry, Sheriff, but I was just trying to see if the Mesa Kid's gun could hit anything facing it. He talks big after he empties my gun. We were just having a little discussion about the population of Monument City. Too many people here. One too many. Just a little argument, you know. And I can think of a way to settle it without talk. How's that? At high noon. I'll be here. And you'll probably show up with a gang at your back. Just so I win, Trigger. That gentleman is the way that bad men get notches on the handles of their guns. And there's just room for your notch on mine. You men witnessed the appointment. I expect a square deal. All right. Were you aiming that sidewinder's lead at anything? Well, if the gun is straighter than the kid, I drew a line under that dancer's name on the poster across the street. While the doors are swinging? Well, I had to see the target. And I've got to see who's crazy. Come on, boys. I knew you'd come, Tim. I need you badly. Will you stay? Well, you heard me make a date, Sam. No, no, the job I mean will take longer than that. Tim, will you wear a badge? You can't meet him at noon. Jenny Mason is a famous dancer. And from what I hear, she's a fine girl. She's coming ahead of the show for the reception. I want it to be a nice one. Maybe she'd like a little fireworks with it, eh? No, no, Tim. That's not the impression I want travelers to take away from Monument City. Sam, you seem to be serious about making this place a decent place to live in. Mr. Rand, I don't know how, but you sure did it. I don't blame the kid for running. I tagged him for a four-flusher from the start. <laughs> His room is yours, Mr. Rand, on the house. Thanks, but I think I'd prefer the sheriff's invitation for sleep. Well, the drinks are on the bar, Z. You'll have to have a better reason to turn that one down. I have. A little while ago, you said I had a pretty fast mitt. I aim to keep it that way. All right, come on, boys, let's all have it. <laughs> Looks like Martin ain't scaring easy. He's still at it. Maybe that's why I brought you along. Look things over. I'll go down and talk to him. Now well, you're talking friendly, Barney. Send this to headquarters. Oh. Think we have hit Mother Lode. Blasting through rock. Unsafe, lawless conditions still prevail. Important you double efforts to protect our payroll. Hello, Mr. Martin. It's a pleasure, Mr. Bronson. It isn't often I have visitors here in the open. I reckon this is a pretty bad stretch of country. I was over to Independence, thought I'd drop in sea on my way back to Monument City. Any more skullduggery going on? Pretty bad, Mr. Martin. All the folks can talk about is a new killing or robbery. They're not exaggerating. If my men weren't good shots as well as good miners, I wouldn't be operating here today. Well, looks like you stay busy at least. Yes. In spite of the difficulty of keeping men on the job. Sure of it, but they'll never stop me. I admire you, Mr. Martin. So long. So long. I know somebody who'd pay a thousand dollars in gold if that mine stopped working. If you're right friendly with him, Barney, maybe you can help me get that thousand. All right, but watch your step. Hiya, Barney. 
Barney. I told you to meet me in Monument, kid. Where are you going? For the two best gunslingers on this frontier. I got a date in Monument with a show-off. Well, you sure work fast. I have to when Trigger Tim Rand's around. Tim Rand? I ran into that snake in the saloon. First thing I know, he starts in to push me around. Howdy, stranger. Howdy, friend. I'm a friend of Mr. Martin's. Thought I'd look the place over. Oh, that's all right. You want to load these on? Yes. Well, wait a minute. I'll give you a hand. It's kind of a stiff oh, job. That's fine. Thank you. These things get pretty heavy to carry. All right. There you are. You're all ready. Now, on your way. Thanks, friend. Sounded like an explosion. I wonder. What did you say? Oh, nothing. You better get on your way. That stupid sheriff probably sent for Tim Rand. And there's a bonus in it for you if you make sure you don't stay put. Leave it to me. Past 11. Tim, I'm going with you. Me too. You know the Mesa kid ain't coming I alone. I told you fellas I was going to handle this alone. That's final. There's hardly anyone on the streets. What's happening here, Sheriff? Nothing yet, Mr. Stoner. Oh, uh, meet Tim Rand. How do you do? Stoner, Wells Fargo, Mr. Rand. The Sheriff's told me a lot about you, but not that you scare people off the streets. Are you staying with us long? You tell us that. Well, Sam and I had hoped he'd agree to a deputy's badge. The only thing I've agreed to is an appointment at the saloon at 12 o'clock with a fellow. So long. What for? A shooting date with a Mesa kid. Well, you're the sheriff. Why don't you go with him? No, oh, I wouldn't a minute. But some wolves insist on howling alone. Funny town. Nobody to meet me, and aren't those bullet holes over there? They certainly look like it. Go on, driver. Yeah. Well, here's the theater, but no reception committee. Good morning, miss. Welcome to Monument City. You must be the reception committee. All one of them. How flattering. May I help you down? Thank you, sir. I miss... I know. You're Miss Jenny Mason. You know my name? I know your name, your favorite color, your favorite flower, and your favorite person. Really? You restore my faith in the Western man. But perhaps they're not all like you. Someone has attacked my name with bullets on that billboard. Not attacked, merely underlined and decorated. And with the very best lead the writer could buy, too. For decorating purposes only. Well, in that case, yes. Get that buckboard out of here, Jim. There's a shooting due in ten minutes. Get up, get up, get up. Wait, my maid! My maid! My luggage! Don't get excited, miss. 
There's nothing you're worried about. Nothing? No, ma'am. You see, we uh, we had a nice reception planned for you, but right now the hotel, uh, uh, that is the hotel. Uh, yeah, uh, right now the hotel is being abandoned. Uh, yeah. Marty, the kid's got a date. I today. know, I met the kid. But you can't go in there. It's almost 12 o'clock. Everything's going to be all right, I hope. In about 10 minutes. I have a feeling something terrible's going to happen. And here I am hoping he isn't the one to get hurt. I don't know why. We'd better get out of the way for a spell. your argument, kid. Find two more inside. Well, the hotel has resumed operations, Miss Mason, and the best rooms are reserved for you. And the man who reserved them is all right. I'm so glad. Thanks. And the proprietor is honored to have you, Miss Mason. I'm Barney Bronson. How do you do, Mr. Bronson? I suppose I owe you a debt of flanks too, Tim Rand. Maybe you won't think so when you take a look at the place. One of the kids' wild slugs stopped the clock at 12. Then I'll leave it that way. Just as a warning to all killers that you are around. If you are around. Now may I show you our accommodations? Thank you. I am rather tired after all this excitement. Jack, you see if you can find the lady's suitcases. <laughs> nice fellow, Bronson. If you ask me, he's responsible for all the skullduggery that goes on around here. You know, Sam, I'd... I'd kind of like to see that girl dance. What was it you said a little while ago about a deputy's job? Sam, did you hear that? He'll take it. Mr. Stoner, that anyone claiming to know what Tim Rand will do next is a liar. <laughs> anyway, I had a lucky hunch and sent for the badge. <laughs> Sheriff, <laughs> Sheriff, come on, hurry up. Lon Martin just come in from the mine. There's a mess of trouble. Your first job, deputy. Come on. Three of my best men killed. The bore smashed. The foundation crumpled. In a split second, we've been set back six months. At first, we thought it was an accident. Then when you found that cigar butt and that train of burnt powder, added that up to anything else that had happened, you didn't think it was an accident, eh? Yeah, exactly, Mr. Rand. Well, there's only one answer to that. Somebody's trying to put you out of business. That's just what I was talking about with Mr. Bronson. Bronson? Was he there? Yes. Stopped by on his way from Independence. Why? Was he the only stranger about at the time? Yes. Well, he couldn't have done it. I watched him right away. Besides, he's got his own gold mine in that hotel down the street. And if he reached here in time for your shooting, he's out. He couldn't have made it. Listen, boys. Trask just told me that Monument has a new deputy. 
to everybody drink on the house to trigger Tim Moran. Oh, Mr. Bronson. Those men. Well, oh, don't you worry about those men, Miss Mason. You're perfectly safe here. Thank you. And about my trunk. Oh, I made a special trip to take care of that for you. It's on its way up here now. Excuse me, Mr. Bronson. I couldn't help overhearing what you just said about Mr. Rand being deputy. Does that mean he'll stay in town? Some people think he will. Thank you, Mr. Bronson. Oh, Barney, that ain't being friendly at all. I ordered you not to show in town. Well, how else am I going to collect that thousand? You mean that the mine is... Sure. Now, give me the bottle. Not yet. Not till I check your story first. You mean you don't trust your friend, Barney? Hey, you're in luck. Martin's mine's just been blown to pieces and three of his best men killed. Pete just rode into town to tell about the accident. Accident? That's all I wanted to know, Hippo. Just to think that stuff's been in there all the time I've been here by myself. And I didn't have the sense to... Now, I want you to get out and don't show up in this part of the country again. Oh, Barney, that ain't being friendly at all. Why? That stuff loosens your tongue. Yeah. I guess I could do some talking at that. You could talk your neck into a noose for murdering three miners. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, thanks a lot, old pal. I'll be missing you. You've got to do something, Mr. Rand. There's a month's payroll coming in from Independence. But I'm telling you that no one but the office in Independence and myself know the trail the payroll wagon's taking. We still can't take any chances. Mr. Martin, didn't you say Bronson was on his way from Independence when he stopped at your mine? But what connection could he have with my payroll? Absolutely none. The payroll's in the hands of my company, Wells Fargo. We guarantee its arrival at Monument. Well, we'll guarantee it gets from Monument to the mine. Fine. I guess there's nothing else we can do now. Good day, gentlemen. Hey, goodbye, Good Mr. Day. Good day, Good Hey, Martin, if you're staying in town, you're welcome to take potluck with Tim and me. Well, thanks. I may as well wait for the payroll. Well, you'll be here, won't you, Tim? Yes, but I want to do a little scouting around the country before that payroll gets here. Yes, and I want to ride down the road to peace and meet it. So we all better hit the hay early. But, Tim, I thought you were seeing Miss Jenny in the morning. Lanky, that's one date I'm going to let you keep for me. <laughs> Who? Me? I've been expecting you. I know about the mine, Bronson. That ought to discourage them, huh? It was cheap, too, and they haven't got a thing on us. Don't be too sure. There's something else you must do. If it's the payroll, we're all set. Not with that new deputy. I want you to get him. Some of the best gunmen in the country have tried that. But we could outsmart him. I said get him. Don't delay. Yes, sir. Wagon should be due soon. Let's go on a ways.
expecting somebody in on the stage, Mr. Martin? No, uh, I'm expecting... Uh, Special Hitch is bringing in some new mining machinery, Mr. Bronson. Oh. Drop in and have a nip with me later on. Excuse my interrupting, Martin, but the new deputy's got me so I don't trust that fellow either. Like it? I'm a sightseer. You look like a top hand to me. Mr. Rand sent the outfit. I'm going riding. Well, maybe I can find you a side saddle. How great you are, Mr. Bronson. Didn't you know side saddles went out with shoe buttoners? <laughs> you know, shoe buttoners? <laughs> Remember? Shoe buttoners. <laughs> I told you to clear out. I did, Barney. But I thought it'd be right friendly to come back and trade you something you want. What are you after now? Two more of them little bags you gave me. That could have been you, Barney. But it's just to show you this ain't no squeeze. And I really got something to trade. What is it? The new deputy. I don't want what you say you've got. I've got to have it. These are for the proof that Tim Rand never comes back to Monument. This badge and a piece of that fancy vest. It looks burned. I learned a lot about dynamite, Barney, from a friend up at the Martin's mine. Where's Tim Rand now? He was driving a Wells Fargo stage the last time I saw him. But by now, he's spread it all over the country. Now I really am clearing out, Barney. For oh, good. Think of me once in a while. <laughs> when I got there, trace of the strong box. The wagon, just a bunch of kin. Found these pieces of his clothes at the edge of the gulch. Hey, everything went off dandy. We tossed a load of powder into that wagon with a long fuse, time to go off in the gully. Then Trigger Tim must have caught the runaway and stopped it before... Yeah, I just heard the sheriff telling about picking up pieces of him. Yeah? Hippo Potts told me he finished the new deputy off. Why, he wasn't even in on this. And if Tricker Tim was riding in that wagon, he didn't need anybody to finish him off. Why, the double-crossing liar. Who? I want Hippo Potts rubbed out on sight. He cold decks me out of $2,000 in gold for that piece of tin. Ho, <laughs> ho,
Barney Bronson ain't been friendly to me. That's just Barney's trouble. He just ain't friendly. Mister, you, you're dead. I saw you die. Yes. You, you were in that wagon. It, it blew up. I, I saw it. I, I found your badge. How did you know it was my badge? I dreamed it, I guess. I'm glad you ain't hurt. I saw you in Monument, I reckon. Yes, and I saw you drop something in that well. I'm going to find out. I should have headed back to the mine. You're staying here. I'm not going to have any more blood spilled on that trail. May I come in? Sure. Hello, Hello. Gare. Hello, Lanky. Well, what brings you here? Mr. Brunson gave me that. Said I might treasure it as a souvenir of a, of a new friend. I hate that man. I don't like the way he said it. I had to find out. Is is Mr. Rand... Did Bronson say where he got this badge? He merely said someone found it near a gulch. Sheriff, I won't go back to that man's place again. I can't. You won't have to. You can stay here on the cot that I... I fixed up for. Come over here and meet Mr. Martin. Martin? This is Miss Jenny Mason, the dancer. How do you do? She was a friend of Tim's. You knew him? I was a new friend like you. I've got a notion that's going to be smart Mr. Bronson's first slip. I ain't figured out yet how, but... Well, hot ziggity, it's Trigger Tim Rand. Why, I thought that you... You thought I was at the bottom of Deepwater Gulch, didn't you? Well, I aim to find out how that exaggerated statement got started. Well, you will as soon as you... Well, Miss Mason, what are you doing here? I told you my friends call me Jenny, Tim. Remember? I remember. Jenny. Anything wrong? Oh, no. Everything's grand now. Just grand. Tim, when we got to the gulch where the wagon went over, I found your horse. Well, that's fine. I'm going to need him. Well, we started looking around, and I picked up patches of your clothes. Oh, that must have been my vest. I used it to try to beat out the fuse. The rest of the story is short, but not so sweet. Team broke away, and I jumped off the rig just before the charge blew up. That's only half of it. Look what I found on the way in. That's my payroll. Where'd you get this? The big ox was so glad to give it to me that he took a shortcut to glory down a well. 
He thought I was dead, too. Said he found my badge beside the goat. Here's your badge. Where'd this come from? Barney Bronson. He gave it to Miss Mason to remember you by. I'm just dumb enough to think that hunk of shiny stuff ties Bronson in with the, the ox that took the shortcut. Yes, and unless I miss my guess, he'll be wishing he had it back. What are you figuring to do? Well, I'm going to play dead to everyone except you folks. Then if you loan me a six-shooter, I'm riding. Riding where? To catch up with that cow outfit. We're going to need men we can trust. Looks like you're going to get that cot yet. I always said there's nothing permanent when Tim's around, but you're not running out on a lady. At least not until you take a bath and I rustle up some potluck. But, Sheriff, I'm... I'm there's really... nothing to get a chance to eat with a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't, please. Let me explain. I told you to get rid of Hippo. I'll make up the $2,000 to you. I didn't know it was a cold deck. He had the badge and a piece of the bird vest. Where is the badge? Where is that badge? Well, that dancer, Jenny Mason, she, she's kind of sweet on me, and I, I gave it to her for a keepsake. You fool. If Hippo and that girl talk about the badge, its trail will trace from him to her and from her to you. Don't worry about that. I'll get it back. I'll give you till sundown tomorrow. Mr. Bronson. Always? Always. You weren't in your room last night. Don't you like our service here? Your service is unusual, Mr. Bronson. Oh, now, I didn't mean to pry. I, I just went up there to ask a favor of you. A favor? Mm-hmm. You know, everybody around here was mighty fond of Tim Rand. I'm donating a stone for him. And the folks want to plaster his badge on it. I'm sure your sentiment will be appreciated. Well, you can contribute, too, by returning the badge to me. Oh, but I can't. I don't have it. You don't have Well, maybe we can help you find it. Well, I, I wouldn't know where to look for it right now. But if you aren't in a hurry... Oh, but you don't have the stone yet. I think that's your first hurry. Besides, Lanky's waiting to go riding with me, and I'm late. Goodbye. Trask? Yeah? I've got a job for you. What is it? <laughs> oh. Honestly, Lanky, I almost laughed in his face. Yeah, imagine Bronson buying a headstone for Tim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thought that was... Oh, so she wants to race, huh? Come on, boy. Come on. All right, take her inside. I'm going to the cave.
Charlie Mason's horse. And I'm going in there after. Drag him inside and stay here. I've got to get to Bronson right away. Morning. Something's happened. The sentry's dead and the payroll's gone. Who got it? I don't know. Honest, I don't. But I heard that Martin paid his men off at the mine this morning. What? And there's one member of this outfit that's a double crosser, and he's dealing with Martin. Martin? Yes. And Martin's going to tell me who he is. You mean you're going after him yourself? You think I'd take another chance on you? I've got a sundown appointment here that I can't keep. Without that badge and payroll, my life ain't worth a plug nickel. Oh, but you can't take Martin to the hideout. Lanky and that girl will see you. I'll take him to his own home. Come on. Good morning, gentlemen. What can I... You can tell me where you've got your payroll and talk soft. So you are mixed up in this. Well, you're trying to scare the wrong man, Brunson. So you're going to be hard to handle, are you? I mean, I'll never tell where I got my payroll. You're going back in that tent and why your people, you'll be gone for a couple of days. We'll see how tight you can hold your tongue. And after I tell them that, where do I go? Home. Your home, Mr. Martin. But my Chinese cook, he just resigned today. All right, Bronson. And don't cross me, Martin. All right, Joe. Take a while. Tell Cartwright I'm keeping an important date in town. It's about help in clearing the bore. Tell him I'm leaving you in charge. You seem kind of nervous, Mr. Martin. Huh? <laughs> oh, no. I just can't keep my hands still when I'm thinking. It's a bad habit. Yeah. Gets on people's nerves. Sorry, Bronson. That's all, Joe. Come in. I'm ready. Don't follow me. Tell Sam Dolan at Monument to send dead man and mourners to my house. My life depends on secrecy. When did you get this, Sam? Martin's operator brought it just before you came in. It's a good thing you're back. Bambunctious till I need them. Martin's life is endangered. Have you seen anything of Miss Mason? I had no hair of her lanky either. Well, you better go down to the hotel and see that she's all right then. All right, son. Be careful. Listen, Martin. Trask is getting pretty drunk and impatient. He wants to use his gun. But you won't let him. If I die, you'll never learn how I got my payroll. Blackie, get him. You're going back to the cellar, Martin. Well, what's the difference? The cellar's full of rats, too. Ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Get him out of here. And I don't need you either. But while you're in the killing mood, you can go out the rocks and take care of that mason girl and lanky. Before a posse's out looking for him. What did you say? What's it to you? You can't do that. I won't let you. Would you like to see us do it, Mr. Martin? No, no, I, I believe you. But you wouldn't dare. There's one way you can stop me. Start talking. All right, Bronson. Well, uh, you see, the serial numbers on that money were recorded before it ever left Independence. Oh, I see. Then whoever got it must have guessed that. Found out he couldn't use it. But I only got half of it back. The men took half salary. I don't want to hear that. 
I want to know the name of the double crosser who brought it back. Who was he? I don't know. Stop stalling. Who was he? What do you mean you don't know? Shut up, you're drunk. Come on, who was it? I'm telling you. When I got back to the tent, the money was there in a package. There was a printed note on it, and it said if I'd meet the writer here tomorrow morning with the reward, he'd bring back the other half. He's coming here? That's what the note said. It was unsigned. What about the reward? I'll give him a sight draft on independence. Keeping my mind working is worth 5000 to me. I don't care who gets it. Now, you see that Miss Mason... I still don't know who got the payroll. Work! Get him out of here. Don't look at me, Barney. I didn't have anything to do with that deal. I'll soon find out. I'm going out now and round up every... You're staying here. Oh, that's Mr. Get him out of here. Go out the rocks and do as I told you. But you told Mr. Martin. Get out and shut up. Keep your mouth shut about what you've seen here. Send a guard back here. Oh, all right. Wait a minute. Round up every man in this outfit. Tell them to be at the rocks by noon tomorrow. Or else? Yes, sir. You were to bring me a badge at sundown, Bronson. Remember? How did you know where I was? You can't hide from me, Bronson. I know you couldn't get the badge. I know you've got the girl. I know you've got Martin. I know the payroll's gone. The guard's throat slipped. Knifed? That hippo's work. Him and his knife. He's the one. He's coming here after that reward. He's... He's dead. A deputy found him at the bottom of an old well. I know that, too. What are you going to do with me? I'm giving you one more chance. I'll do anything. Get the man who comes here to see Martin. That's right. Nothing's right when a stupid bundler is running things. But don't you see, with Hippo and Martin out of the way, and the girl taken care of, and I nabbed the double-crosser, we're in the clear. <laughs> the money was hot anyway. Well, I never cared about the money. If Martin missed his payroll, he couldn't operate his mind. That's what I want. That's what I want. And don't you trust a man as clever as that double-crosser. He might send someone else. Yeah, but how are we going to find out? I'll know him when I look in the face of every clumsy lot in this outfit tomorrow. Be there. Be there. A bullseye. One cigar. Why don't you kill us and have it over with? Oh, let's not show the bad side of us, Miss Jenny. We might as well see the best shooting show we ever seen before we go. You darn tootin', Lanky. It's too bad tricker Tim Rand passed before he met the best gun slinger in Miami. You know what, Lanky? What, Jack? I bet you I can put a hearing hole in that rabbit's ear of yours. I, be I bet you can too, Jack. <laughs> All still now. <laughs> Bullseye. Two cigars. Hey, Lanky. Huh? Stand up. Stand up. Yeah? Uh, stick out your chest. I'm gonna take a button off your vest. Say, hey, you know, that's fun. Yeah. Let's see if you can take the button off my shirt. All right, Lanky. But you're taking a chance on me. Stop a ticker. Oh, go ahead. You're no amateur. Right, I'm not. Stick out your chest. Ah, shucks. 
No more bullets. No more bullets? No more bullets. You know, Jack, you remind me of a arithmetic teacher I had once in school. How's that? Well, she couldn't count either. Come on, Jenny. You're covered. Trigger! Tim! What's the meaning of the rabbit ears? Where have you two been? In a shack about an hour's hard ride from here. Yeah, old Bronson got us. Had something to do with Jenny and that badge you got there. Lanky outsmarted that drunken Jack Trash. Yeah, <laughs> his tongue was plenty oily, Tim. Did he say anything about Lon Martin? Yeah, he said that Bronson chased him away from Martin's house because they're expecting a visit from some stranger in the morning. You get her to the sheriff, then come back and meet me at the fork of the road near Martin's place. And you better hurry, because we've got work to do. Oh, boy! I want to go, too! Sorry, Jenny. On your way. All right. Wait a minute. Ain't you going to let me go now? I want to be sure you've got everything straight. I've got everything straight. All I'm supposed to do is go down there... Now, Tim? Not now. Oh. Wait a minute. That's Jack Trask. What's he doing away from the hideout? Hey, now, Tim? Honest, I couldn't. They have all hopped me at once. There must have been six of them. But they never got into town, because nobody's seen them at the hotel. That's the last boner you're going to pull, Trask. I'll let the boss take care of you. No, not the boss. Hold your fire. Come in. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Wait a minute. I, I never meant to hurt anybody. What I are you doing here? Well, gosh, give me a chance to tell you. I... Who were the six men that took you away from Trask? Why, there was all... Uh, the, uh, well, oh, I never saw them before. They're, they're holding the girl, too. What'd they want with you? Well, the, the big one, the head man, brung me here this morning to tell Martin he'd talk to him outside or, or not at all. What are you going to do? I think it's the best thing that could have happened. I'll send Martin out, but I'll get a look at the double-crosser so I can point him out at the rocks at noon. Might save my skin. Go get Martin. Huh. Well, he'd be surprised when I tell him who I've been talking to. Now, here. You just forget who you've been talking to. Well, I ain't one to have much truck with lying. Huh. Would uh, $200 help you out? Well, I shouldn't ought to do it. I'll go on out and tell him Martin's coming. Mr. Martin, there's somebody outside waiting for you. And you're dressing me up for my own funeral before I get back. Maybe. Take him to the door, Trask. Ambush, Tim. Don't show. They'll kill me anyway. Target trap. I thought you was dead. Where's Barney Bronson? Give me a sucker's brake trigger and I'll tell you. Go ahead. He went out that way, looking for Martin's visitor.
Why didn't you shoot? You had a chance. I don't miss, Bronson. I want to hear you do some talking first. my ordeal. When the others arrive, I intend to put my finger on the double dealer among us. They'll all be here, and I'll finish the man who double-crossed me. I know him. Name him. I'm the man. Stoner of Wells Fargo, eh? You wheeler! been causing all your trouble. Stoner! Stoner! Take him, Sam. So you suspected it was an inside job, right? Right. Now, is there anything else you want to know? Yes, what town do you play next? Independence. Why? Well, that's funny. Lanky told me he was going to Independence. Why? Well, I didn't say I was going... Of course, you know, I couldn't trust him to go over there alone. But I didn't say I was going to go over there. You know Lanky. I'm going to Independence. 